We have had several tutorials of late where we have dealt with exchanging data using the JSON format. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about JSON in more detail. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. In this tutorial, I'm taking some content from my advanced topics course, a bit about the JSON format. Now, if you like my teaching style and are interested in more advanced topics with JavaScript, I've provided a URL with a discounted price in the description section of this tutorial for that advanced topics course. Now, if you're doing much with JavaScript, you need to know JSON. And it's very similar to regular JavaScript object notation. So if you've created objects, regular JavaScript objects, then you're very familiar with JSON. There are a few differences which we'll take a look at, but they are very similar. So first, let me cover a few bits of information about JSON, and then we will take a look at the JavaScript object notation and how it translates into the JSON format. So first off, JSON is simply text. It's text that is structured like a JavaScript object. That's an important concept to remember that it is text. Because it's text, we're able to exchange it with different service providers. Now, JSON is commonly used to store and exchange data. If you're retrieving data from some site, for example, it's going to most likely come in a JSON format. And the, the concept that you can store a JavaScript object as text is quite powerful if you think about it. Think about what a JavaScript object allows you to do. And then the ability to store that as text and move between text and a JavaScript object is very useful. And that's basically what we do with JSON. Now, the way we convert between that text and a JavaScript object is using the JSON object, which is provided in JavaScript. And this JSON object comes with two methods. And those are the methods we use to move back and forth. They are JSON.parse and JSON.stringify. Now, JSON.stringify takes a JavaScript object and converts it to text. JSON.parse is just the opposite. It takes a text string and converts it to a JavaScript object. So if we have an object that contains data that we want to store, we convert it to text using json.stringify. We send it to the server and store it there. Or if we're pulling information from a service and it comes as text, comes as JSON text, we then you can use json.parse to convert that. Now, different services also have JSON methods that allow us to convert the data. As you may remember, if you've viewed our fetch tutorials, the fetch API has a JSON method that does that conversion from text to a JavaScript object for us. Now, JSON gets its name from JavaScript object notation. It takes letters from each of those words and we get JSON based upon that. So it is based on how we create objects in JavaScript. So let me jump to Sublime and we'll take a look at that. Here we have an object that we're creating and we've done it using literal object notation. So we declare the variable and then we set it equal to and then we use curly braces to signify the object. Inside of that object we have name value pairs and those are separated by a colon. Notice that as we have a new set of name value pairs, we have a comma to separate those. So we have F name, and the value of that is Stephen. We have L name, the value of that is Hancock. Notice the types of data we can also store. Here we have strings. For score, we have a number. For past, we have a Boolean. And for modules, we have an array. This is an array of different modules. We can also have an object within an object. And we'll take a look at that in just a minute. So this is how we create an object in JavaScript. 
Well, let's look at how we would set up a string, a JSON string that could be converted to a JavaScript object. So I'm first going to declare a variable. This will be a string. Since JSON is simply text, we want to assign it to a string. And then I'm going to put single quotes. We'll contain this inside of single quotes. Now, since we are setting up text that will become a JavaScript object, we use things that are very similar to creating an object in JavaScript. So we want to start with curly braces. Just like we contain an object in curly braces when we're creating in JavaScript, the JSON text should have curly braces around that object as well. And then let's go ahead and set up our first name value pair. Now, one of the differences with JSON is that the name in a name value pair must be inside of double quotes. That's not required when we're creating an object, as you can see here. But inside of JSON, we must have that in double quotes. So I'm going to put F name inside of double quotes. Then we do a colon. Now, since the value is text, we want to put that in quotes as well. Now we go to the next name value pair. I'm going to put a comma to separate them. Quotes, L name, colon, and then the value. And then let's just do one more. Let's do the score as well. So I will do score, colon, and then 89. So there we have a string set up. And this string can be converted to a JavaScript object using the json.parse. Also, this object that I've set up here can be converted to text, JSON text, using json.stringify. Let's take a look at those. So let me save that. I'm going to jump back to my original HTML page and open the console. Now here is the string that we set up. Now let's go ahead and see if we can convert that to a JavaScript object. So in the conversion, I'm going to assign it to obj1. So I'll set that equal to json.parse. And then inside of parentheses, we enter the string. Now let's go ahead and take a look at obj1. And there we have obj1. We now have an object. So we can open it up just like an object. We can see the name value pairs, f name, l name, and score. Those are all showing up. Now, as mentioned, we could go the opposite direction. Direction. So we set up obj. Let me just display that. Here's our obj object. If I open that up, we can see we have more name value pairs. And one of them happens to be an array. The value happens to be an array, which we can see there. Let's go ahead and convert that to a JSON string. So I'm going to do str2 and set that equal to json.stringify this time. And inside of the parentheses, we will enter obj. Now let's take a look at that string str2. So here is the string equivalent to that JavaScript object. Notice how it takes care of the array down here. So we have a name value pair. Here's the name. It's enclosed in double quotes, colon. And then we have the square brackets to indicate it is an array. And then the values are inside that array. All right, one more thing to look at really quick. I mentioned that we can have objects inside of an object and that we can reflect those inside of JSON. So let's go ahead and add a simple object here. We're going to create an address object. Now, when you're doing an object inside of an object, the value is simply defining new objects. So we use the curly braces to do that. So here I have a new object. And then I can put values inside of that object. So we'll go, let's see.
something like this. We'll just keep it simple. So there's an object inside of an object. Let's go ahead and save that and let's convert that to JSON text to see how it looks. So I'm going to jump out again here and refresh this. Let's take a look at this again. We'll set up str2. We'll set that equal to json.stringify and then pass in obj. And then str2, let's see what that displays. Now notice we now have this object. We have the name value pair, the name is address, the value is an object. And inside that object, we then have additional name value pairs. So now you've been able to see how we can set up objects inside of objects and arrays inside of objects, all within JSON text. And the JSON parse and JSON.stringify allow us to move between those two formats when needed. Now, before we're done here, please hit the like button. It can help others on YouTube find this tutorial. Also hit the bell button to be notified about new tutorials. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face. I release a new tutorial each week. You can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com for full courses and a complete list of tutorials. Thanks for watching.